Germany is on trial at the International Court of Justice for its role in Israel's genocidal war against Gaza. Now, this case has been brought by Nicaragua, and it centres on Germany's arms sales to Israel, which represent about 30% of the total global arms sales to Israel. In 2023, Germany approved weapon sales to Israel worth over 326 million euros. Last November, in the midst of Israel's onslaught against Gaza, military exports from Germany to Israel increased by around tenfold, thanks to the German government fast-tracking permits. So Germany is the second biggest supplier of weapons to Israel after, of course, the United States. So many of you may be wondering, why the hell is it Germany being hauled before the ICJ and not the US, given that is, after all, Israel's biggest arms dealer, without which Israel simply would not be able to pursue the horrific onslaught against Gaza. Very simple reasons. The US opted out of the relevant parts of the Genocide Convention and the ICJ statutes. Germany hasn't. Now, last week, after I debated an Israeli so-called influencer, I was involved as a consequence in a huge online firestorm because I said that Germany was forcing the Palestinian people to pay for its own grievous crimes. That is the attempt, within living memory, to exterminate the Jewish people in the Shoah. Succeeded in murdering two-thirds of the entire Jewish population of Europe in a very short period of time. Now, I'm going to go into the case against Germany and why it matters... But let's just hear from the clip from that debate I took part in for context. And we'll see why, of course, it is, of course, correct. In terms of arms, uh, Alicia Kearns, the Conservative MP and chair mm -hmm. of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, in a leaked recording, said that the government had received legal advice that Israel was in defiance of international humanitarian law. What that legally necessitates is Britain ending all arms arm sales, but also ending all cooperation and sharing intelligence. Now, you're right. Britain doesn't supply that many arms, but if it ends arms sales, that then puts huge pressure on Germany, which has decided to make the Palestinian people pay for the grievous crimes it committed by oh, attempting to exterminate on, the, Germ uh, the Jewish people. Come on, have some decency. Um, and and, and the second and no, the second I won't point, let you. Well, the the, the yeah, memory and, and of the, the, the Holocaust will not be used okay. this way. How dare you? You're it not Jewish. Be used. Don't it do that. It shouldn't really, be used. Really, don't do it. It this shouldn't be used to force the Palestinians. Even for you, it's a red line. It shouldn't be used to force the Palestinians. Let's be clear. You are... What are you saying, I think Hen believes that you are... that you are. Disparaging the memory of the Holocaust. Of course, because, you just did. No, I didn't. You I said, said Germany is making Palestinians I said Germany's pay, pay yes, for the six yes, million that were killed yes, in the I Holocaust. Did. Yes, I absolutely. This is absolutely disgusting. I can't believe no, you're you're, you're, what I, you. I stand by what I said because it's absolutely true. Um, are are you saying that wow. Germany is supporting Israel because of what happened? Yes, in it's, the it believes it rather can make, than it, punishing it, it, it the believes, Palestinians. It believes Germany. Germany has decided it can make up for its obscene guilt by forcing I'm somebody else guilt. to pay for the crimes that Germany committed. Yeah, it's a very straightforward wow. point. There's nothing offensive about it. It's a of, very Of course point. it's offensive. I'm telling no, you it's no, offensive in terms of, and I'm a Jewish in, in Israeli. Terms of, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of answers. You will not take it back. No, I, I Because okay. you don't care about will, Jews. Because you, you know don't care about You know what's interesting? Okay. I interviewed a German Israeli. I interviewed a German I interviewed a German Israeli. It's really... And people should check that I interviewed a German Israeli. One person's opinion is not definitive. They're shutting down Jewish people in Germany who speak about Gaza. Now, I'll go through the response to that clip after we hear exactly what's happened in Germany's trial at the ICJ. Before I share some clips and information about this case, some will quite legitimately point to Nicaragua's own bad human rights record, and that's why they are entitled to bring such a case. I share the objections to Nicaragua's human rights record, and this case should be judged on its own merits, that is, the strength of the case. Another caveat, though, while a legal case such as this clearly has a purpose, I don't believe the legality of Germany arming Israel's genocidal onslaught is the final word. If the court declares it's legal for Germany to arm Israel to the teeth as it wipes Gaza off the map and murders its population, I'm not going to go, oh, fair enough. Same with the Iraq war. If the UN Security Council had approved that horrific onslaught, I wouldn't have supported it. But it is very useful at exposing the crimes currently being committed in Gaza and putting pressures, pressure on politicians and indeed helping the cause of accountability. Now, Nicaragua has hired the prestigious German lawyer, Daniel Muller, a German lawyer. I must say, that really is chef's kisses on their part. He makes it clear, based on the statements by Germany's own leaders, that they were perfectly aware of Israel's crimes, but armed them anyway. Let's just hear what he had to say. 24th March, the federal foreign minister referred to the hell of Gaza and the dire situation of people starving to death. She also underlined that military action has its limits in international humanitarian law. And during her visit in Tel Aviv, 
Ms. Baerbock announced that Germany will send a delegation to Israel to discuss questions of international humanitarian law because, and I quote, as a signature of the Geneva Convention, Germany is obliged to remind all parties of their duty to abide by international humanitarian law, end of quote. And still yesterday, it was reported that a group of 600 German civil servants was calling on the government to cease armed deliveries to the Israeli government with immediate effect, exactly because, and I quote, Israel is committing crimes in Gaza that are in clear contradiction to international law and thus to the constitution which we are bound to as federal civil servants and public employees. Nevertheless, Germany still has not taken the decision to suspend its military support and the export of military equipment to Israel. Rather, in a recent response to a series of questions asked by members of the Bundestag, the government reiterated its position that export licenses will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis and in light of specific circumstances. Members of the court, to put it simple, highest German officials have recognized that the situation in Gaza raises doubts about the respect of elementary rules of international law, and thus, and that these questions need to be addressed. Yet, while we speak, the export of German weapons and military equipment to Israel, likely to be used for committing these grave violations of international law, is continuing. Let's go to hear from Muller on the justifications offered by Germany's leaders about their behaviour as regards Palestine and Israel. Members of the court, the Federal Republic was and is aware of the situation and in any event could not have ignored it. Despite the very many warnings, alarming reports and messages of the United Nations Secretary General, United Nations Special Rapporteurs, the International Red Cross, and even the European Union's High Representative, Germany continues to assure and implement full support to Israel for its war against Gaza and its population. Addressing the Bundestag on 12th of October 2023, the German Chancellor stated, and I quote, at this moment, there's only one place for Germany, the place at the side of Israel. That is what we mean when we say that Israel's security is a German raison d'etat. Our own history, our responsibility arising from the Holocaust, makes it our perpetual duty to stand up for the existence and security of the state of Israel. This responsibility guides us. The Minister for Foreign Affairs that said the day before, and I quote her, Israel's security is a German raison d'etat. With this understanding, I have offered Israel all our support in every area. Well, there we have it. Germany is arming Israel to the teeth, despite knowing it's committing terrible crimes. It knows what's going on. You can tell from the statements. They're not stupid, these people. And knowing full well that Israel has, over the last few decades, engaged in murderous ethnic cleansing against Palestinians, the longest belligerent occupation of modern times, the longest siege of modern times, theft of land, illegal colonisation, repeated murderous attacks on Palestinians. We could go on. And the justification for Germany to unequivocally back Israel is the Holocaust, the gravest single crime committed in human history by the German state. In other words, Germany is forcing the Palestinian people to pay for what the German state has done. The obscene crime of the German state. That was a point made by the German Chancellor, the equivalent of the Prime Minister, Olaf Scholz, on the 17th of October. Here's a translation of what he said just after he spoke during a press conference with the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Prime Minister, the security and safety of Israel and its citizens is part of Germany's raison d'etre and political doctrine, and we wish to behave accordingly as the German government. The German parliament has supported this 
approach and uh, all parties subscribe to that. It is very important to say this now at such difficult times for Israel. German history and the responsibility that uh, results from the Holocaust requires that we help safeguard the existence and safety of the state of Israel. Now indeed we can hear Germany's own case presented by their lawyer at the ICJ. Germany has learned from its past, a past that includes the responsibility for one of the most horrific crimes in human history, the Shoah. This explains one of the principles upon which our foreign policy with regard to all Middle East issues rests. Our history is the reason why Israel's security has been at the core of German foreign policy. In her speech to the Knesset of 18 March 2008, Germany's then Chancellor Angela Merkel spoke about Germany's special historical responsibility for Israel's security as part of Germany's raison d'etat. Federal Chancellor Olaf Scholz reiterated this point in his speech to the German Bundestag on 12 October 2023. I quote, our own history, our responsibility deriving from the Holocaust, makes it our permanent duty to stand up for the existence and security of the State of Israel. This responsibility guides us. Well, again, there we have it. Germany itself is saying that its position towards Israel and Palestine is driven by its genocidal history. Germany must know that what it describes as Israel's security in practice means depriving Palestinians of their rights on a whole range of fronts. At the moment, on a massive scale, their right to life. But Germany knows that it is not paying that price. The rights of German citizens are not being attacked. It's the rights of another people being attacked. Now, the US professor of international law, Robert Howes, writes, Nicaragua versus Germany, the ICJ. Germany's agent weakens case by admitting that Holocaust guilt is the overriding consideration in putting Israel's security beyond other normative imperatives. Their raison d'etat, her words of Israel's security above all else, versus international law. Well, that really is the key point, how they have decided they should respond to their past. That is their interpretation of what Israel's, Israel's security means, which in practice means deferring to how the Israeli state defines its security, which is by definition attacking the rights of the Palestinian people. That overrides other considerations. As Kenneth Roth, the excellent former executive director of Human Rights Watch, himself the son of a Jewish refugee who fled the Nazis, Germany defends itself at the International Court of Justice by saying that its foreign policy after the Holocaust is built around defending Israel rather than preventing mass atrocities. That's the wrong lesson to draw. Now let's listen here to how Thomas Doten Dreyfus, a German-Israeli author, put it to me. I think that they are very good in, in, um, in remembering and, re and reparations as long as they don't really have to pay the price for it. Um, they are not the one that have to give up... Um, land they're not the ones who have to you know, even when they gave money you know even in the reparations agreement from the 50s um it was money to israel so that israel can buy weapons and infrastructure from the german industry it was boosting the german industry and in return israel promised them that the holocaust survivors in israel would not be eligible to sue germany independently so um it was a very messy very dirty um uh, deal um and they are on the one hand presenting themselves as world champions of of memory and memory culture and all this kind of stuff on the other hand they have turned memory culture into the 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 realm through which they can find their nationalism again german nationalism today is around uh supporting israel it's around uh this historical um responsibility and their their interpretation of it um and one could also say that you know because it's not very legitimate to to um manifest german nationalism after the second world war they're doing it through israel they're waving the israeli flags they're because you know israel is the <laughs> the, the country of the victims so how can they be wrong so all of that makes the intense backlash i received all the more absurd although it's not unexpected Anyone who speaks out against the current horror is liable to come under attack. 
Now, let's just take, for example, this tweet by Dave Rich, the head of policy at the Community Security Trust, who tweeted, this is what it looks like when a once serious journalist turns himself into a social media outrage machine and then trots out his YouTube clickbait material on a regular news show. The dismissive does nothing offensive about something so obviously offensive is perfect. Note the classic strategy here. Don't try and rebut someone's argument. Don't try and show why it's wrong. Just attack the person. Claim they have ulterior purposes. In this case, that I'm trying to provoke outrage. I never try to provoke outrage. I say what I think. It causes outrage sometimes because, in my view, lots of people get outraged about actually what should be very sensible things. For the last few months, people have been very outraged against me because I think that Israel shouldn't be slaughtering thousands of innocent civilians. I've had a huge amount of outrage over that. I don't think it's justified. I'm not an outrage machine, am I, for objecting to mass murder? But unfortunately, in the current context, that is a cause of a lot of outrage. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, I don't know actually Dave Rich's current position on Israel's onslaught in Gaza. I'd love to know. But I would know he doesn't try to engage with my actual argument or to draw about it. Not a single person tried to rebut the argument I made for very obvious reasons. They didn't have any rebuttals of what I said. And there's a very obvious, straightforward reason for that. Because what I said was correct. Self-evidently correct. With absolutely nothing offensive about it, unless you're trying to contrive offence. Actually, the people who should be offended are the German states. Because I made a very serious accusation against the German states. Which is, they are knowingly engaging in activity which is depriving the rights of the Palestinian people because they think that's payment, that's reparations for what they did, the German state, not the Palestinians. I had someone suggesting the German state should sue me for that. Don't think that's how defamation law works, I'm afraid. Um, though, if Germany wants to sue me in a court of law, I mean, they're not going to do it because that wouldn't, wouldn't make any sense. But if they did, I'd relish it. I'd just repeat all their statements. In practice... By the way, this has also meant the German state has waged a remorseless war against those within Germany speaking out against the genocidal war against Gaza by silencing in terms of arresting, cancelling people from speaking, a whole range of ways. But gruesomely, that's disproportionately meant targeting Jewish people. Indeed, according to the researcher Emily Dish Becker, around a third of those cancelled in Germany for supposed anti-Semitism are themselves Jewish. Is that how Germany thinks? It's going to make up for its genocidal past by targeting Jews. It's also been used to justify racist treatment of German Muslims, portraying them as a hateful fifth column. I've had horrible stories sent to me, including a German shopkeeper who is from Iran. He fled Iran because he's gay. And because he supported a ceasefire in Gaza, he's been racially abused by non-Jewish Germans saying despicable racist things and trying to force him to put the Israeli flag on his door. I'd also note, by the way, the statement issued by Namibia on the 13th of January, which was pretty extraordinary, essentially told Germany to shut up and sit down, pointing out that it was the first victim, Namibia that is, of the first genocide of the 20th century at the hands of Germany. That was Germany's first genocide. What an extraordinary thing to have to say out loud. I mean, lots of countries don't, they don't have one genocide that they can point to. Germany has, has actually several, actually, if we're going to get into it, because not only the genocide they committed in Namibia, there's the Shoah, and they also committed specific genocides, for example, against the Roma. Now, we could go on. They have a very, very bleak genocidal past. Now, Namibia wrote, on Namibian soil, Germany committed the first genocide of the 20th century in 1904 to 1908, in which tens of thousands of innocent Namibians died in the most inhumane and brutal conditions. The German government is yet to fully atone for the genocide it committed on Namibian soil. They rightly denounced Germany's inability to draw lessons from its horrific history. And that's indeed the point here. Germany's making a packet, its arms company, selling arms to Israel as it wages a genocidal war against the Palestinian people. And we're supposed to believe that's Germany atoning for its genocidal past. It's not atoning for its genocidal past, it's adding to its genocidal past. It's learned nothing, or indeed drawn the exact opposite conclusions it should have drawn. Germany should have made vast reparations to the Jewish people for the abominable crime that it committed. A crime which is so huge, it's beyond the imagination, frankly, of the vast majority of us. It should not have interpreted that as forcing a people with nothing to do with that crime to pay for it. And now we see the cost. The killing fields of Gaza where German weapons are used to slaughter Palestinian men, women and children in vast numbers. Another sordid crime to add to Germany's already grotesque child sheet. 
Please like and subscribe. Do leave your comments. We'd love to hear what you think about this. Uh, do share the video. Get the word out. Uh, keep the show on the road and patreon.com forward slash Listen to us on podcast. I'll speak to you soon.